welcome back. These are challenging times for all of us, but for those who were already on, say, public assistance, who were already relying on Meals on Wheels, those who were already in need of a lot of medical care, well, the challenges have only intensified in frightening ways. Let's talk about that and more with Lisa Whitmore Davis. She's the Wayne County Senior Services Director. Lisa, thanks very much for the time this morning. I hope you've been well. Uh, I'm curious as to whether, um, has your phone been ringing off the hook? Has it been crazy now from people who don't quite know what to do, or is everybody still sort of trying to adjust to whatever it is that's coming? Thanks, Devin. Uh, yes, it has been very busy. Our staff has been working pretty much around the clock to ensure that we can re be responsive to the calls as well as reaching out to some of our partners to help us uh, carry this load. But uh, Wayne County government and our senior services department, we're committed to serving our older adults. Well, we got the, the announcement this past week from, uh, we already were wondering what uh, the burden was going to be on like Meals on Wheels. Um, and then we get the announcement that they were shutting down for five days so that they can kind of recalibrate and reassess. Uh, but what does that tell us about uh, the kind of need that we fear is coming? Well, in uh, anticipation of that shutdown, we provided our Meals on Wheels participants with a cold five pack frozen meal so that they could be sustained during that time. Right. But part of the reason is that we realized because of the pandemic and how we want to keep everyone safe, not only uh, keeping our older adults and seniors strong nutritionally, but we have a volunteer core of over 900 volunteers who many of them themselves are over the age of 65. And we want to make sure that everyone is safe and we had to change how we uh, produce our meals so that we can get the numbers out, but also make sure that our volunteers and our volunteer drivers remain safe as well. Well, I was going to ask, have you, uh, do you have a problem now with enough volunteers? Because no doubt they're worried too about having so much contact with other people at a time like this. Yes, and uh, the Evans administration, our CEO and all of uh, his team and the executives have stepped in and filled that, those gaps as we're on furlough, as you're aware. My colleagues around the county uh, out of our different departments are stepping in and filling in those delivery gaps so no one goes without getting a meal. And we are so grateful to uh, their commitment as well. Um, the other thing that, uh, of course, a lot of seniors have to worry about is getting to medical appointments. And that's one of the, I think, untold stories so far. Uh, our hospitals are obviously very concerned about this virus, but you still are going to have people who are uh, needing dialysis. You have people People who have heart attacks and strokes all of that stuff hasn't stopped just because we've got this uh, pandemic going so what are we doing to make sure that our seniors uh, can still get the level of medicare and, and even not just seniors anybody in need of health care right now can still get those root what this what has become to them routine Yes, there's so many organizations like the, the Senior Alliance in Western Wayne, our Detroit Area Agency on Aging. We have all been talking throughout this pandemic response to make sure that our resources are readily available. The information lines, people get that information. We are all to, to be able to, you know, be referred to who they need for support. Um, but Devin, the main thing that we've really been trying to do across uh, all old uh, uh, senior services organizations is to help older adults manage the fear and yeah. managing that fear with information, with education. For example, when we knew we were going to have to uh, pause our meal service and go to the cold frozen, we had a hand delivered note brought to all of our participants in Wayne County and to let them know because we we wanted to uh, allay their fears and so many gave responses like, thank you so much for letting me know. I'm going to be okay, but thank you for checking on me. I think that is uh, something that we're really trying to make sure that we can help allay the fears. They're founded, but to help control them as much as possible. Lastly, Lisa, a lot of people are looking for ways to help others right now, whether it's uh, an extra big tip at a, for a carry out at a restaurant or whatever it might be. Uh, what would you recommend people do right now uh, that are looking to help, uh, whether they want to volunteer or whether it's financial? What would you tell them to do? 
donations to our Meals on Wheels programs, that is vital because we're really um, receiving not only sustaining our current participants, but we're getting calls for new participants and we're going to yeah. try to yeah. our best to address that and we need those extra funds to be able to uh, 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 to uh, help with that nutritional need. Yeah, we're going to try. I'm sorry. I've been, I stayed up all night the other day working on oh, this project. I, I know. So you, I and, you and your folks are working your tails off. I so appreciate the time. Stay well, and we'll talk to you again soon, Lisa. Thanks very much. Thank and, you. And thank you so much for being here as well. Meet the Press coming up next. Have a great week, a safe week, and we'll see you next time on Flashpoint.